be discussing a little bit about tech and the service industry. So we're going to do this in three separate chunks. First chunk is we're going to go around for an introduction of our panel, who they are, their experience, what their businesses do. We've then got 40 minutes in the middle where we're going to be discussing a number of different topics. And if you're listening to this as a recording, just sit back, take it all in and um, and um, comment or message me if you've got any questions afterwards. So I'm going to come to Hannah first, who can give us a little bit about herself, her background and um, how the last 18 months have been for her. Thanks, Christian. Um, so hi, everybody. So I'm Hannah, and I'm the Head of Marketing and Customer Success at Pepper. Um, quick intro to Pepper. So Pepper build apps and web solutions for hospitality. Um, we do ordering, so all the different ordering journeys, order to table, pay at table, click and collect. Um, and we also do integrated loyalty with that as well. And we have partnerships with a lot of the big EPOS companies, so plugging directly into, you know, our clients' menus and, and sort of working with them. Um, my background, so I spent five and a half years in the marketing team at JD Weatherspoon. And when I joined Weatherspoon as a graduate, there was this app that everyone was kicking about and lots of people were very busy. So they gave it to me because we weren't sure if it was going to grow into anything. And then I kind of uh, looked after that project all the way up uh, until its launch. And um, many of you will know that the Weatherspoon app was kind of very successful and um, widely used before the pandemic meant that apps were mandated. So that's my kind of background. And I joined Pepper about a year ago. And my role really is to work with our clients outside just building their apps so a lot of what I do is working out how we can get more customers to use it how to improve the operation what successfully in turn um, and to really get on this you know the business need and the business case for these technological innovations um, so coming at it from an operator and a marketer's point of view um, rather than necessarily a um, techie perspective. Um, I think the last 18 months, the effect on Pepper, um, obviously there's been a rapid adoption of order, order and pay technology amongst the industry, um, especially with the government uh, mandating table service. And what, during the lockdown, obviously, click and collect became a massive customer journey for lots of us who wanted to enjoy uh, food at home but couldn't necessarily eat in restaurants um, so yeah it's been a whirlwind kind of 18 months for the company and um, we um, have learned a lot are still learning a lot from our customers and um, yeah I'm really excited to talk a bit more about kind of innovation and that adoption and you know what the next 18 months looks like for order and pay technology as ordering at the bar or counter um, comes back in. Excellent, Anna. Thank you very much for being with us. Andrew, we'll come on to you next. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Andrew Wheel. Thank you again for inviting me on the panel, Krishnan. Uh, my background, well, I've worked for over 25 years now in hospitality, uh, worked in most departments of hotels, uh, did some hotel openings like the Shangri-La Hotel in the Shard and uh, also the South Place Hotel on Liverpool Street. And as well as operations, I've always been a techie. But until about three or four years ago, I denied it. Uh, and then essentially I embraced technology and joined Muse, the property management system, uh, one of Europe's fastest growing tech startups in hospitality. And I was managing director with them for a number of years until sadly uh, last year I had to take redundancy in July as we'd scaled the business to make sure it could survive the uh, economic conditions that we all faced recently. Uh, and this also gave me the opportunity to set up my own business called Hospitality Tech Expert. And what we do is we advise owners and operators on their technology stack. Uh, whilst hospitality has been forced to engage with technology rapidly, many of the hoteliers, owners and operators don't actually understand what technology exists and what they can leverage uh, so we help them to, first of all, to scope, understand what it is that they're trying to achieve and then source the applicable technology and in some cases to deploy it um, really to ensure that we get the 
best tech experience, as we call it, for the guest. So making sure that their actual tech journey for the guest is smooth, but also operationally to make sure that uh, the staff can use all the tech as and when they need it. What's changed for me? Well, as you see there in the last 18 months, an awful lot. Uh, in terms of our business, since we started just over a year ago, initially the focus of our business was to help the industry to implement contactless technology, as everybody was asked to embrace, as Hannah was saying, you know, things like QR codes, uh, um, ordering on your mobile app, and also things like mobile keys, online check-in and check-out. More recently, we've been focusing on driving efficiency, particularly here in the UK, where we've uh, now come across a new challenge, which is the fact that many, are, sadly, have left hospitality in the last year. So a lot of businesses are struggling to find staff. So they're looking for ways to drive automation, to leverage technology, to, uh, to provide a more efficient level of service. So we're trying to get that balance right now between helping them to take away the boring, mundane things, whilst allowing their staff still to deliver that amazing customer experience. Excellent, Andrew. Thank you very much for that. And thank you very much for being with us. Much appreciated. Narcissus, we'll come on to you next. Hello, I'm Narcissus. I've uh, been uh, also over 20 years on the food supply chains, done a lot of operations uh, uh, and a lot of end-to-end. Uh, um, -end. So I can really say that I'm farm to fork all in all. Um, but anyway, uh, in the last few years, I embraced also tech, so a bit like Andrew, uh, more than before. And I ended up involving myself a lot in early stage uh, tech startups, uh, especially related to the food uh, uh, industry, uh, also fintech. And um, I, uh, I helped a few uh, order pay solutions during COVID to, to get off the ground. Um, sorry, Hannah. Uh, just competitors, uh, not on purpose. Uh, and um, and ultimately, I am now uh, uh, in the middle of uh, uh, a new development, which is talking about QR codes. Um, imagine if you had a fully integrated and at the same time decentralized way of uh, managing data flows and data sharing from literally farm to fork without any kind of integration. So that's that's what I'm doing at the moment. Excellent, Narcissus. Thank you very much for being with us. Much appreciated. And lastly, we will come on to Nick. Hi, Nick. Hello. Uh, thank you for having me. So my name's Nick. I work for Vita Mojo. Um, we are a full operating suite of software for the hospitality sector, primarily restaurants and pubs. Um, we originated in our own restaurants in London a thousand years ago or 2015. Um, and we built uh, fully digital environments with kiosks and click and collect. We kind of took our product to market in about 2019, 2020. We kind of led with order pay because that was a strong part of our product. And, but we've really started to accelerate the, the kind of operating system piece um, which comprises of all of that order pay stuff. So whether that's click and collect, order and pay tables, self-serve kiosks, delivery, etc. cetera. Um, we also have integrations with the three aggregators. So delivery aggregators, so Just Eat, Uber Eats, um, and Deliveroo. And then we have a hub that aggregates all of those orders so that we can, can create simplicity for the operator to know exactly what they have to make for whom at what time, what packaging, et cetera. Uh, we're now dealing with the complexity of dark kitchen brands, which is, has been loads of fun over the past few months. Um, and then we have management panels that allows you to enable, um, allows you to manage everything through your system. Uh, anything that happens on a Vita Mojo platform, equally, it helps you manage your aggregators, your menus. You can push those menus, those aggregators. So full operating suite, very strong additional ordering, which was our bread and butter. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, as, 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 as everyone has said, it's been a crazy few months, 18 months. There's been a lot of growth, uh, a lot of challenge, good challenge. Um, and I'm really fascinated to see how this kind of digital transformation continues over the next year or two. And I'm going to come to you first with the um, acceleration of um, innovation, i.e. apps, data, design, technology, and their use, and what you've been seeing going on. Hannah, over to you. Thank you. Yes, I think um, in all the 
festivals of hospitality, we've definitely seen that um, rapid acceleration of digitalization. So uh, order and pay as one example, um, you know, order and pay at table became a really, you know, essential tool for operators to manage sort of enforced table service, especially in um, the pub and casual dining world. Um, what I think has been really interesting is that, you know, for a, for a very long time that was enforced so you had to have those solutions and I think now the kind of onus is going to be on companies like Pepper to, to you know to prove their worthwhileness and longevity so I think we shouldn't take the kind of digitalization that we've had during the pandemic for granted um, which is where kind of customer success massively comes in um, I think the kind of benefit that a lot of hospitality businesses I work with have seen has been that kind of um, increased data set. So actually, when you've got, you know, 80% of your customers ordering digitally, you get much more actionable data. So for example, being able to send a push notification to everybody who's visited one specific location to be able to say, you know, our quiz is back for example, and just being able to segment your audience like that for, you know, five to 10 site operators, that's a, that's a really powerful marketing tool that perhaps they didn't have before they implemented these kind of solutions. Um, we've also seen just some fantastic success stories amongst our clients. Um, one in particular is uh, Coffee Co, who are a uh, seven location coffee chain in Cardiff, um, they recently hit 100,000 downloads of their app um, just across seven locations. You know, they're completely cashless now, very digital led business. And, um, you know, they're taking on the big the big boys of the coffee industry in Cardiff. Um, and actually what their Pepper loyalty solution allowed them to do during the pandemic was really engage their audience and make them you know, convert a one-time visitor into a really loyal customer who comes back time and time again and eventually gets a free coffee because they've filled up their stamp card. So I think the, um, yeah, the adoption of these technologies was enforced to begin with, but I think operators are really starting to see the wider benefits. Um, I think someone mentioned earlier the staffing issues that are kind of uh, endemic in the industry at the moment um, and a lot of order and pay technologies are sort of you know taking the brunt of that work away from team members so I've got one client who operates a uh, possibly about 150 cover restaurant on the South Bank and between the pandemic and just a lack of staff generally um, you know they've they've said we wouldn't be able to operate if it wasn't for our web solution so they're not using an app they use qr codes on tables and that's taken away the need to take payment and take orders um, and their staff can just really focus on getting the food out as quickly as possible um, and to their usual high standard so there's been lots and lots of um, benefits i think the other thing that um we've really seen is finance are very happy with the effects of this digitalization um, because ATV tend to be higher um, customers who are using um, and digital, lo digital loyalty. Um, I think I speak for everyone when you stood at the bar, ordered a gin and tonic and they said, what gin do you want? And you panic and you say, I'll just have the house. Whereas actually putting that in the palm of the customer's hand, we see that, you know, yeah, I'll trade up for a lemon drizzle, sip Smith gin, why not? So um, that kind of ability to really present the fantastic sort of range of products, I think has been really, um, really important. Um, for me, though, I think if the adoption and acceleration of technology is going to continue, I think no one can lose sight of the fact that the most important people in the hospitality industry that are going to, you know, affect that change are the the people working in our pubs and restaurants and coffee shops and hotels. Um, and it's the staff on the ground and actually the, the role of both tech companies and, uh, you know, in large organisations, the marketing team is to, you know, equip those um, team members 
to be able to sell in the benefits to customers, to understand how to use those technologies, to remove the frictions that mean maybe team members, you know, would rather just take an order on a notepad. Um, so I think, you know, it's been a fantastic 18 months for companies like us. Um, but, you know, the work continues. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing where we do end up. Thank you very much for that, Hannah. Just a quick one. I mean, I just Googled the population of Cardiff and there's like 380,000 people in Cardiff. So that means technically like one in four people in Cardiff have downloaded your client's app, which is just the most astounding present like penetration. How, um, like, how are they using that? How did they get to that point? How is it affecting the bottom line? What's the benefit of all of this? Um, so... It can, that number will include, you know, people who have got a new phone and re-downloaded it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to be optimistic and say we have got a quarter of Cardiff, but um, you never know. There might be a few repeats in there. Um, for Coffee Co, we actually, we filmed a really great case study with them the other day. And um, one of the, one of my favourite things that came out of it, I was chatting to, we were chatting to a barista called Callum I think his name was and he said I am less tired at the end of my shift now that we've got this technology because especially in that kind of coffee or QSR space where you've got customers coming in ordering and then waiting and standing in front of you um I don't know if anyone on the panel has ever worked in that environment but those eyes really do bore into you um so the the fact that such a high percentage of their orders are now click and collect and customers are just walking in picking up their order and going out again um you know that barista his his main focus is just making making a really great cappuccino or a really great latte um other real kind of benefits again for coffee co specifically um they already had this uh, order and pay technology in place when the pandemic was announced um oh sorry the lockdown was announced so they actually kept trading um and had very little kind of interruption um which i think um and they've got some beautiful locations as well right on the bay um so people who were going for long walks you know that became a sort of daily treat for people almost um but what they've seen is that they've really retained those customers and they've got a way to remarket to customers who maybe haven't been in for a month they can sort of send them a push notification or a nudge or an offer to say you know time to pop back in um so yeah coffee co definitely um definitely one to watch it's been a it's been a real um journey with those guys Excellent. Thank you very much, Lahaya. Anyone else got anything to add in on the acceleration of innovation, um, um, apps, etc.? Nick, you were last in. Do you want to? I'm going to. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't want to repeat everything that Hannah's just said. It's all very salient, um, and much of it that we've seen, I guess, as you would expect on our side as well. I think where it's really where good, great operators have really shown progress is around kind of creating these food retail brands that happen to exist within the bricks and mortar location. So really pivoting away from being just full restaurant brands by creating these new channels, new revenue streams, whether it be through an app, as Hannah was describing, or through a delivery channel and, and creating these digital consumers. And the creation of that digital consumer just means that you can, you know, again, as Hannah was describing, you can engage with them, you can reward them, you can get their feedback. Um, and you can encourage them to spend more money with your brand uh, and become a raving loyal fan. So the kind of, kind of the digitization piece, especially for quick service restaurants, has really helped those brands that are forward thinking. And then as an as an addendum to that, now we're seeing you know so many established restaurant brands looking at dark kitchen, you know sub brands that will operate out the same premises so they can sweat the existing kitchen asset. They're almost kind of, you have to run out the same kitchen and you have to try and manage through the same kitchen display screen so that you can optimize fulfillment, et cetera. So, which is, which is really interesting and also really challenging from a kind of product development perspective to try and build that kitchen display screen that can cope with multi-brands out the same environment at the same time, the same ingredient set. So it's been a really interesting period and I'm, I guess we're kind of going to come on to the future in a sec but uh, looking at how that continues to evolve in the future and I think there's so there's a slight misconception because there's been this this acceleration in digital adoption and part, partly ma as uh, partly mandated 
but equally some of it not. And it's, it's kind of started that transformation piece. But actually, we, for many brands, we are actually only at the start. And often we're finding that potentially the mentality of operators hasn't changed a huge amount. And they're seeing order pay as something that they had to do and are potentially not embracing it in the way that they could or see it as a very black and white piece. So you either do, you either have some sort of dish ordering or everyone does it, or you have none of it because I just don't want to do it. And so creating an environment where the customer gets to decide what the best experience is for them, I think is going to be an integral part around digitization and how it will continue to be an important part of the sector moving forward in the future. And you guys operate outside of the UK as well, don't you, Nick? So we, uh, yeah, we're, so we're starting to now. So we, um, so we, we supported Leon in the US, in Washington, primarily. Um, again, a kind of crazy quick thing that we did during COVID and we released an app in Washington, which we weren't expecting to do. Um, Leon has since closed those stores. Um, we were about to go live in Europe. So in Belgium, the Netherlands, um, and France uh, with Le Pain Quotidien and and again randomly we're in Australia with Granger & Co's parent company Bills um, so um, yeah it's been it was starting to develop internationally but we, what we really want to do is just make sure that we get a good foothold in the UK before we do that and I was going to just ask I mean that was the best pronunciation of lpq that i think i've ever heard if i mean I, I mean we recruit for them and i get it bloody wrong do you know what i mean well done nick but with the um um with the international side of things were there any tweaks or any kind of like things that you noticed were specific to the uk market um i think i mean there's the obvious there's the obvious piece around language capability so um we're actually launching in belgium first which is probably the most complex market in europe because they've got within one country they've got multiple languages uh, um, much to the yeah so our product team are kind of scratching their heads at the moment in terms of how we're going to manage that um, I think there is um, definitely more of a kind of e-com slant well certainly to Le Pen Quotidien because of the, the their product range and how they they kind of build their product um, obviously different geography diff different geographies will behave in different ways but fundamentally the kind of the the kind of main component parts of digital ordering don't vastly change, but you just have to understand the local differences um, and how the customer demographic engages with different brands and food brands and, and kind of what works. Um, it's kind of early for us, so it's probably a question I can answer in more detail in, in a few months' time. Thanks, Nick. Thank you very much for that. There's a very persistent Amazon man at your door, I think. But anyway, there you go. Um, Narcissus, coming on to you next, in, in terms of customer engagement, uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you are handling that at the moment? So um, I'll give you an example. It's just one of the examples of uh, one of the few companies that I worked with uh, uh, during the pandemic uh, of launching and seeing how the customer engagement can work. Coming back to order pay at the table, uh, because it was mandated, as Hannah was saying, but uh, how do you differentiate and how do you make your customers part of the journey when you are trying to increase your market share. So um, they added a feature, which was first uh, in part of the time, um, which was basically um, sharing your, your, uh, your bill through the app and moreover, gifting or making gifts to other people, friends, uh, remotely, so through the app. So, for example, let's say that you are saying, I'm going to meet a friend to have lunch together and you are late. So, you actually send him a gift, um, uh, 10, 10 pounds, 5 pounds, uh, one beer, uh, one snack uh, that they can do uh, whilst uh, they wait for you. So, um, so, all that through the app. And that was a, a way of actually getting a lot of customers to, uh, to, to use their app above the others because it got huge huge uh, engagement from early adopters so that's an example of how to be a bit different no but uh, uh, but at the same time um, going forward the more you um, you take your customer on the journey with you when you are developing your features from a technology point of view the faster adoption you're gonna get and the faster market share you're gonna increase 
Absolutely. No, so thank, you. thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Andrew, coming back on to you, and uh, the question that I had for you was around kind of the latest trends in terms of what you're seeing in the sector and with your clients. Can you give us a little bit about that? Thank you. Yes, of course. Yeah, the only thing that's freezing today is my internet connection. <laughs> it's very hot around here. Um, so what we've seen is initially, of course, everybody was deploying tech to solve a specific problem, which was kind of this contactless guest journey. And as Narcissus was saying there, sometimes it was the technology was put in front of the guest needs. Uh, so there was kind of a knee jerk reaction to deploy some tech, which uh, maybe actually was useful at that specific time uh, in the situation, but actually wasn't aligned with the vision or strategy or the customer experience or the service delivery that that particular brand or uh, even that particular customer was looking for. Uh, for example, we've seen things like the mobile key adoption, which has been great, uh, mobile check-in and check-out solutions, you know, uh, essentially ways to try and reduce pinch points in your property uh, to allow guests to come and go uh, in smoother transitions uh, without having to uh, in, be in proxy, close proximity. But what we're seeing now is that there's been a shift change and that people are looking at how to deploy tech uh, to solve a specific problem. Uh, and uh, an example of that, for example, would be chatbots. So initially you would say, okay, so a chatbot, you'd put a chatbot in because, uh, okay, that gives you a way to be able to answer your guest queries in specific, perhaps about your hygiene um, protocols, about your health and safety protocols. But now people are looking at how can we deploy a chatbot to reach our customer across a multitude of different platforms? Because we're used to certainly in, in hospitality and engaging with our customers by sending them emails. Uh, what we could do now, of course, is use their mobile phones to reach them via WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or even by old fashioned text messages. So it's looking at ways to leverage technology to reach your consumer, your guest in a way that they want to be uh, communicated with and that they find the most comfortable. Uh, and that's really interesting because it's almost like sort of uh, the digital trends of the populace rather than the digital trends of hospitality itself. Uh, another great one is, is looking at ways in which you could drive ancillary revenue in your business, but do it in such a way that, again, you're answering the consumer needs at the right time. I'll give an example of a pizza restaurant, for example, that decided to, to use a, a QR code scanning system where you could place your order on your mobile phone. And then at the end of it, your order, it would say, hey, and do you also fancy garlic bread? Now, they sold after deploying this more garlic bread that in that month than they had in the prior three because it was placing the, uh, the garlic bread at the right place in the customer journey. That they go, oh, yes, and now we'll add that. So it's about trying to find technology that embraces the guests rather than seeing like it's forcing technology onto them. Lastly, I would say, and probably most importantly about all of this, the biggest shift change has been that initially we did a knee-jerk reaction to deploy a piece, a singular piece of technology. The challenge for that, as the panel has alluded to, is firstly the guest journey in the sense of if you as a guest have got to log into three different applications during your stay, and that information, as Hannah was saying at the uh, beginning there about data collection, is then in three different data pools and not in one big central place where you get a consolidated view of your customer, then, then that's a, a problem for you, um, both for the customer in terms of their journey, but also in terms of your, your operations, that your staff have got to learn a multitude of different systems. That's where the question now is coming up. Should we go for a bundled approach to our system? You go for one supplier that has a multitude of offerings within their product suite, or do we go with the unbundled approach? Because we've seen so many new tech companies come into the market in the last year with very specific product offerings, but it means that then you've got to manage through the API connectivity a multitude of these different technologies and manage your guest and staff journey through that. So people are starting to get a little bit more uh, thoughtful, perhaps, about how they're deploying tech to make sure that this is a long-term strategy and not just something that fits our current uh, environment or solves a, a, a problem that's right in front of us right now. It's going back, as say, to understanding who your customer is uh, and what's right for them.
Very lastly, on like for a QR code, for example, if you deploy a QR code in a restaurant where your menu is all about creating that experience, well, where did the oysters come from? Where the chef was out this morning and he's, you know, he's been down there and picked them himself, collect themselves. The the cucumbers are from here. The cheddar is from Cheddar Gorge. Uh, that is part of your experience that you are curating. And when you put that into an app, you take it away from the customer experience of, of that uh, that journey. So it's really understanding what your customers want, what differentiates you from your competitors and why your customers come to see you. Then you can find the right technology to enhance your experience, to go and check out some of your uh, competitors. So, you know, if you are a, a restaurant or a hotel and you have a vision or strategy of what you want your customer experience to look like, go and have a look at the others and find out what is the technology that they're using and go and ask them because we, we are an industry that loves to talk to each other, thankfully. Um, and actually, because we've been quite slow to adopt technology in the past, having that recommendation, particularly when you're building your stack of what works well together um, and uh, you know how your customers have adopted that, thinking about what Hannah was saying in the adoption in Cardiff of her technology, that's fantastic to hear. Uh, and so uh, you know, that's a, as a good barometer for which is the tech that would work well for you. And the last one from me, uh, talking about uh, word of mouth, as we call it now in the industry, um, every hospitality um, place has uh, a post system or um, um, a payment provider. Um, they are the major aggregators in technology, generally speaking. So you can actually talk to them and ask, hey, what are other people using to solve this problem? And they can pinpoint to, to you to technologies that are actually already integrated with them. So it's going to be easier for you to integrate it within your business. And I've got one more. Oh, great. Go on. Um, I'd also say, you know, as uh, restrictions lift, trade shows are coming back. So um, one that I know is the restaurant show, 27th to 29th of September at Olympia. Um, and there's also the restaurant tech show as well coming up this year. Um, I will be at the restaurant show and I plan to treat it like an episode of The Apprentice. So please come and speak to me because um, I'd like my team from Pepper to win. Um, but yeah, I think um, when I was at Weatherspoon, going around and just speaking to everybody in the industry um like you say we love to we love to have a natter so um yeah face to face at the restaurant show i definitely recommend it's a really good one excellent thank you very much Hannah. much appreciated now on to um Narciss, your next question was around digital communication and how that's becoming more prevalent so i'll just um go to you with that one and i'll throw out the spotlight <laughs> thanks okay so uh, this is actually touching a bit into what uh, Andrew was saying uh, just earlier. So the solution that we came up with is uh, uh, what we call a universal translator, uh, where you talk about uh, integrating data without integrating or how to explain it. You have 20 technologies and each one has a data, uh, database management system. Um, you don't have to integrate them. You just make them talk to each other in real time through a universal translator, which means that you, your consumer will be able to have access to all the data in one place without having to uh, use your database management. So you are a consumer and you go to a restaurant and you, uh, Andrew was mentioning about the provenance and the, 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 the fact that a lot of the information to the consumer is getting lost when you're talking about technology. Well, imagine if you were to scan a QR code on a table for, or, on a, or, or on a menu, and it takes you to a dish that has been created in the restaurant. And because of the technology e that we talked about, you have access within that scanning moment, you have access not just to the dish, but to all the information relevant to the provenance of each component of that dish all the way from the from the restaurant all the way to the farm and to the to the to the to the to the to the feed that the that pig let's say ate that you are eating a steak and it tells you which uh, which farm made it uh, what animal was uh, what certification they have and how uh, how it went through 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 the whole processing and um, that currently is impossible because there are 
myriad of disparate systems on the supply chain with our technology that is possible without having to change the database management systems within each party each part each part of the journey of that component so that could solve the problem of what we call integrating different disparate systems that uh, uh, for the consumer benefit not to have to download all these myriad of, uh, of applications Excellent. I get it now. I do actually understand. Thank you very much for that, Narcissus. So, Hannah, I'm going to come back to you with uh, your final question. You started this so we can, we can end with you as well. But on how tech companies have had to evolve to work with hospitality over this period, could you could you give us a little bit on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think um, when uh, I joined Pepper, I had no experience of working at a... Um, at a sort of in a B2B um, agency software company. Um, But I had lots of experience of working with agencies um, and being frustrated with them. So I knew knew more what not to do than I knew what to do. Um, And I think the the biggest way that I think tech companies have had to evolve and will have to continue to evolve is in this customer success space. And and really when when I say customer success, it's just a fancy word for, it's sort of a fancy word for marketing and communications and kind of all the things that hospitality is very good at anyway. Um, But I think, you know, I think the tech companies and agencies, and I apply this to, you know, creative agencies as well, um, I think any kind of software business that's engaging with hospitality. Um, and the example I'd give of one of my ma- major frustrations was someone would say to me, you know, how does this offer work? That's when I was at Weatherspoons at Set State Club. And I would say, you know, our menus are on our website. There's a Weatherspoon on every high street. Sort of, you know, is that not something you could have looked at for yourself? Um, and I think that's where... Um, you know, I think Pepper is a really great company in that sense because actually we are, you know, part of the customer success remit is going out and visiting all our clients as often as we can. Um, you know, having those menus on the tables, um, at our desks. Um, I think the uh, one thing that I'm really proud of is that we all do the induction training as if we're a brand new member of staff. So, you know, technically, FI, um, you know, been through the the REVs training program, if you like, for their bars. Um, And I think that's really, really important because hospitality has had to pivot majorly um, numerous times during the pandemic, and that's going to continue to happen. And um, as Nick was saying earlier, you know, what might have been the, what might be the ideal way for a pub to operate today, um, you know, in a year's time, if their order and pay sales have gone through the roof, maybe their bar's going to need to be refitted or maybe they're going to have to think of a different solution for click and collect orders. So that change is going to keep coming. And if tech companies don't really understand the brands they're working with and aren't making that effort to, you know, really work collaboratively with their clients, then they're going to quickly get left behind. Um, and some examples... You know, some other examples from uh, Pepper, when we did our first um, app at a festival, um, you know, I went and did a bar shift for a weekend. Um, and I, I apologised to everyone at Pub in the Park for, because I poured many, many dodgy pints of Australia. It had been a little while before anyone had let me, uh, let me behind a bar. But, you know, I learned more in that weekend than I would have in 10 hours worth of meetings with that client. So I think that kind of you know, hospitality's always had customer service at its heart. And it's all about giving the customer at whatever venue they're in the best possible experience. Um, And for me, that's how tech companies have had to evolve over COVID because they're working with, you know, teams that were part furloughed under enormous pressure. um, And tech companies had to be as accommodating to that as possible. Um, and I think, you know, that's got to continue and we've got to be as hot on the uh, customer service and customer success side of things as we would be on the um, tech development. And the other area that that also works is um, working with 
the other partners of that client. So, you know, working directly with their CRM, um, not necessarily having to involve the client in all of those calls, but making sure that you know what their latest development is so that you're in, on board with it. Um, and kind of, you know, if um, people were talking earlier about, you know, we've, we've still got companies with different suppliers for different things, um, but we should all be talking to each other and making sure that the, the client, the hospitality business, and ultimately the customer still is getting the best possible experience from all of those technologies. Well, thank you very much for that. I'm much appreciated. We'll stick with you because we're going to work around the group now for the last 10 minutes in terms of final thoughts, suggestions, feedback, hopes for the future, and any tips for anybody listening and watching. Uh, what would you What would you suggest? Um, tips for anyone watching. I think um, Andrew stole my point on that because yeah. I think getting out into competitors and looking at what um, other people in the industry are doing is so important. And um, and uh, also globally as well because um, I know that you know of our American clients. Um, I've kind of got a head start on that. So I'm like, here's what the UK are doing. Um, but you know the um, the American order and pay landscape is so different. Um, so I think for anyone out there who's working in an agency or anything, those kind of um, insights where we can get them are really important. Um, to speak about something that's completely unrelated to Pepper for a minute, the other area where I think technology is going to come into its own hospitality is accessibility. And it's something I'm really passionate about and how actually we make hospitality, um, you know, we give uh, disabled customers or people who have needs that we haven't even anticipated yet as an industry. We give them exactly the same experience as everybody else and the same standard of service. Um, and there are some fantastic sort of early innovations in this space that are doing amazing things. Um, and I would recommend that everybody goes and looks up Navilens, which is the next generation of QR code. And it can tell how far away you are when you scan it and um, what direction you're facing. So as a um, visually impaired uh, person in Barcelona, you can navigate their whole tube station and tube service because it will say to you, oh, turn right in uh, 10 yards if you're going to the Barcelona Northern Line. I don't know what that is. Um, and that's just a really interesting example of a technology that's not being used in hospitality yet, but I think is coming. Um, so, yeah, definitely, I think, you know, such a welcoming industry. We want to be accessible to everybody. So keep an eye out for that over the next few years. Excellent, Hannah. Thank you very much for that.